Welcome to Meaningful Mornings. In the past month, our community has prayed many times to support those who have been lost to violence, particularly gun violence. Yesterday, I was listening to a <laughs> powerful podcast on the debate in reference to gun control versus mental illness. Why is this violence? Is it guns? Is it mentality? And the psychiatrist that was being interviewed, she was sharing, if one is struggling with schizophrenia or bipolar disorder, they can be medicated. If one is a criminal, then they're in that system, they can be rehabilitated. Yet, more than 95% of the shooters in a mass shooting, they are not struggling with mental illnesses. They are not struggling with criminality what they're struggling with is resentment, hatred, these subtle thoughts. And psychiatry cannot do anything about this. Social workers can't do anything about this. I'm sharing this with all of you because we're trying to work hard and smart to not be resentful to not be hateful. And I know all of you are invoking that. And since you are, you're naturally evoking this too. What these facets of society cannot do in terms of psychiatry and, and the criminal justice system, our community and millions of communities around the world are working on. Please understand and appreciate how what we do every day impacts our world, our future. Yesterday I shared that Bhagavad Gita is a journey. That's why we're called seekers. We're seekers on this journey. Our journey is diverse sometimes smooth, sometimes rough, sometimes with those who are supportive, sometimes with those who are regressive. Considering our journey is diverse, so is Bhagavad Gita. Subjects like karma, sometimes Sri Krishna is the creator and so on. The more we internalize this, the more we will be patient with our journey, specifically, we will be patient with Bhagavad Gita. This map is not a hack. A hack is a shortcut. Shortcuts only work for short-term solutions. This is not a Pokemon game where you look on your phone and get to this area and get more points. This is our life. 
this is the end of all lifetimes. That is the end. That is what we're tuning into. Be patient. In verse 15, Sri Krishna describes Dushkritina, which is those who are extrovert. Since they are extrovert, they are searchers. Searchers of joy, but beyond themselves. Shri Krishna elaborates on such personalities in verse 20. The key teaching there is Kama. Kama does mean desire, but desire implies that one is incomplete. That's why I have this desire. This incompleteness expressing as desire makes me worship Anya Devataha, to worship that which is beyond me. In verse 21, Shraddhaya. Shraddhaya means with faith. In this case, with faith in the wrong direction. That which is beyond ourselves is nature. Nature like articles, beings, circumstances. In the technical sense, this would be called prakriti. And if I'm worshipping prakriti, what am I missing out on? Worshipping purusha. Purusha means the source of completeness. If I'm always worshipping lowercase and nature, then that means I'm not worshipping uppercase and nature. So Shraddha is great, but in which direction? In verse 22, Shri Krishna shares, Vihita. I am the one who's controlling all of this. The implication of what he shares by this, this is the law of karma. If you act, there will be a reaction. If you act in an extrovert way, your reaction will be in an extrovert way. So this is how he governs this. The responsibility on how to use the law is up to us. One further reflection on verse 22 before we continue. <clears throat> When we are worshipping Anya Devataha, our sense organs, or lowercase and nature, this is all semi, semi-gods. But remember, if you're living for a semi-god, who does that finally go to? The omni-god, correct? State are still governed, even though it doesn't feel like it, are still governed federally. Yes, what's going to the state is finally going to go to the national government. But, because we're thinking, why not keep worshipping semi-gods? It is your intention that facilitates your results. I could be worshipping the semi, semi, knowing it's going to the omni, but if that's not my intention, then I don't get such results. Reflect on this. Sri Krishna makes this more clear in verse 23. This ends a train of thought in verse 23. Which is Swami Tejo Mayananda shared with us that in verse 23, Sri Krishna is pitying those who are Dushkritina, extroverts, searchers, he's pitying them because they're lost. Antavattu palam desham tadbhavatyalpa medhasam devan devaya joyanti Madhbhaktya yanti mam api. 
This is a very direct verse. Tu, indeed. Indeed, haven't you realized? Tesham palam. All of the reactions, all of the results, all of the fruits that come from living by, living for the semi-gods, antavat. What is built into all of this is anta. Tell me, what does anta mean? Share in the chat. Anta means end. That's right. The translation is, it's finite. The more philosophical meaning is, that reaction, that result, that fruit will come to an end. If I'm trying to find completeness, and I am, whether I verbalize it or not, we are all trying to find completeness. If we do this through Anya Devataha, semigods, the A's, B's, and C's, sense objects, we will have to worship Anya Devataha forever. I will feel complete highly temporarily, then feel incomplete, so I have to do it again. And that's why yesterday I shared our own history has taught us that. But are we reflecting on this? No A, B, or C has ever completed us. In the past, present, and it's not going to work in the future. Tad bhavati, tad bhavati. Those who live for the semi-gods, what are they like inside? Alpa. Can you show me what alpa is? <laughs> small. Medasan. They are small-minded. They engage in small thinking. Remember your application from yesterday. Those who live for the semi-gods, they're engaged in small-mindedness, small-heartedness. Pujaswami Tejo Mayananda shared, such people are karmakandis. If we put out a survey and I asked all of you, how many of you are following the karmakanda very few of you would say, yes, I am. But if you're not living for independent joy and you are immersed in the karmakanda, that's reality. In parenting culture, I had shared, as parents, those who are living for results will always compete. Those who are living by effort, they will always be cheerful. So were you cheerful all day yesterday? You didn't compete at all, correct? <laughs> not financially, not mentally. <laughs> Devan, which means to those semi-gods. Deva Yajaha, those who worship those semi-gods. Yanti. They go to them. They become them. Yanti means to repair. You become like that. The semi-gods, they come and they go. Sometimes Indra is in power, sometimes he's not. Sometimes the economy is in a progression, sometimes in a recession. All of this comes and goes. And so all that the semi-gods can give will also come and go. Do you agree? How beautifully in our Upanishad, Nachiketa, who is this brilliant seeker, tells Yamadeva, 
he's also a semi-god, that in some time, you will go away. <laughs> you will no longer be the boss. So anything you're promising me will also go away, correct? Why is China frustrated with America? Because the presidents keep changing their policy. There's no stability. It's sort of legitimate. You never know if America is going to be part of this treaty or not be part of this treaty. That's reality. So why live by this notion of semi-gods and what they can give? And finally, Sri Krishna shares, Mad Bhakta. Those who are devoted to me, Yanti, they also go. They also repair or become. Who? Mom. Me. Those who live for the omni-god, they become one with the omni-god. Between verses 20 and 23, a summary message, the thread that unites these verses, is also a term from our Upanishad. Pariksha Lokan. Examine your life. If you examine your life, then these verses are obvious. And if this is clear to us, all that Sri Krishna is encouraging us to do is change the direction of our application. You don't even have to change the intensity of your application, only the direction. For how much we give to social media, for people to like us, to our families, to our professions, reorient that towards Sri Krishna. And where will we go? What will we become? Him. Creator. Consciousness. What a universal message. You don't have to know more. Simply change direction. From inspiration to application. Your application. Identify three ways you engage in small talk. Small thinking. You couldn't do it, correct? No small talk. No, no small thinking. <laughs> I keep coming back to our Upanishad because these thoughts are so sublime. Na alpe sukamasti, which means there's no joy in smallness. There's no joy in small talk. Sociologists have proven that. There most definitely is no joy in small thinking. Sri Krishna is teaching that. Your Application for today. What articles, beings, and circumstances in your life can you not say no to? <laughs> what articles, beings, and circumstances in your life can you not say no to? Now, some of you are going to say, Chakli, I can't say no to spicy, crispy food. Fine. <laughs> but think about this more in terms of people. I find a lot of young parents don't know how to say no to their young children, and it is harmful for them. Shanti, shanti, shanti. Be safe, be sound, be serene, be joy. <laughs>